Today we're going to be making it through shade tiling. So this is the Wikipedia page. And the idea is you tile it, the surface. Then for each point on the surface, you have a different state. And this determines which pattern you use. So these are um, with like carefully selected states. And this is just a, with a random state. The one we'll be doing is this one. It says quarter circles, so yeah, it's one fourth of a circle, so it's a quarter circle, it's an arc. And we'll be making this in Blender, obviously. And it's really not that difficult, and it's a nice pattern that you can use. And for example, this one is really also not that difficult, it's easier than this one actually. There, you can create a labyrinth. It might not be solvable, but it looks pretty cool. So yeah, let's go to Blender. So let's first create a tiling. And for that, we'll use vector math. One set to scale. This will be the amount we um, tau. And then we get the fraction, and there we go. Let's also duplicate this and change the other one to floor. And that way, you get a constant value for each one, but they're all different values, that's really important. And we can use a white noise texture to get a random color or value for each point. And let's set this to 40, that way we can change the seed as well. If we need to check whether it actually works, will be useful. For example, if you wanted to have multiple objects with this thing, but you don't want them to have the same thing, you can use this and then combine it with object info and then random, like that. That way it will be different for each object. Um, what else? Right. So now we have our tiling and a state for each point on our tiling, so this is our tiling, and this is state. So, as you can see here, if you have one of them, the other one is just the other one rotated by 90 degrees. So, let's already make the state determine that. So first we need to only have two different states. So we're gonna use a math node. And then, let's think about um, less than 0 0.5, so we only have two states. If you want to have four states or something, you can use multiply and then modulo like that. And then let's rotate this vector by either 0 degrees or 90 degrees based on this. So we can add in, or let's duplicate, not this one. Duplicate this one and multiply by pi divided by 2, which is 90 degrees. See nothing <laughs> happening here. Because so we need to use this as our value to rotate. So let's quickly create something that rotates around the z axis. So we need to combine x, y, z, and a separate. Sorry. Let's create a rotate node. Um, let's select both of these and group them together. So our input should be a vector. And we also going to need a rotate, um, an angle to rotate by. So, um, how do we rotate around the z axis? Let me, sorry, don't need this, just need a vector. So, if you using trigonal, you can figure out. So we'll, what, what the matrix should be, but if we search for on, online rotation matrix here, You can see that this is the formula. So we need to take in our, so to find our new x, we should first have 
for the math node. Take the cosine, take the cosine of our x value. No, our cosine of our sorry, our angle, and add minus the sine or subtract the sine of that angle. So sine. And then subtract. And that's our new x value. For the y value, we add them together. So um Right, sorry. This is not yet really what we need. We still need to multiply our originals. So we need to multiply our x. And for this one, we need to multiply our y. For the other one, to multiply our x by the sign. Need to multiply our y by the cosine. So this, um, let's take our fraction. So you can see that it's rotating it by 90 degrees. Actually, we want it to rotate differently. Sorry if this node is a horrible mess. Let's end in vector math and subtract to rotate around the origin and then in the end we want to add back our point let's change this to zero and this to zero so we don't get any random x values but yeah now we've rotated everything and now if we have a pattern, then um, it will be tiled randomly based on this. So you can see. So now we need to. We don't need this anymore. Now we need to rotate uh, or create our pattern. And. Let's see. Um, maybe first, yeah, okay. So we have this, and let's set this to one so we can see better what we're looking at. Um, so the first thing we need to do is take our vector and separate it. Then we need to find the length, so we can do that using um, power using Pythagoras. So squaring, adding, and then taking the square root. So now you can see we have our circle-like shape. But this isn't complete. The other thing we need is um, to have only a part of the circle shown. So we can do that using less than or equal, or less than and greater than node. Let's first, however, take in this value and then divide it by two. So we can use this as our width and then then we'll add it to 0 0.5 and the other one will subtract subtract and then here we can add a less than node and 
we only get this part of the circle. And the same here. Get that part of the circle. And then if we multiply them together, we only get the parts where it's both less than and greater than. So let's multiply. Um, the change is to greater than. And there we go. So this is our width. And it's perfectly centered. Now we still need the same thing on the other side. So to do that, we need to rotate by 180 degrees. Um, so this is our thing. To rotate by 100, let me duplicate it. And then in the end, I haven't rotated yet, but let me just combine both of these using a maximum so that we only get <coughs> one. Now they're both the same thing, so nothing is happening. To rotate 180 degrees, what we can do is, um, let's see. We already made a node. So, take our vector right here and then rotate by pi which is 180 degrees and so now we have both of them actually now that I think about it, it would have been a lot cleaner made this into a node group Move this. <coughs> Let's clean it up. There we go. <laughs> Why does it have two outputs? You don't need the first one. And its name is with. Yeah, and then at the end, we can use our math and maximum. So, is it working or is it not? I changed the width to 0 0.1 on both of these. So, yeah, it is. Um, maybe we can. Sorry. Group this as well, and then have our width be an input value. This is not width. sorry. This is the width. width. So there we go. Now we just need to change the scale. And that's our pattern. So depending on which pattern you put here, you'll get um, different results. 
So maybe let's try and do this one as well. Do it really easily. Normal. So how do we create a diagonal line? Um, we separate x, y, and z. Really cool. A converter separate x, y, z. Um, and then vector no, further math. Change this one to absolute. Yeah. The same for the y. And if we add in, and then um, take for example a less than zero point five, maybe less than one. So this one is like this one. That's this one, except that we've only got two rotations. So we can change that by changing this to a... So right now this is between zero and one, so let's change it to a multiply by four. And then here we take the... floor or ceiling the floor. Now we're rotating by 0, 90, 180 or 270 degrees and then we get the pattern. It's the top one. So you can see if I set the scale to 1 and change this. We get one of those four patterns. But the one we were after was this one. So let me change this value back to two. So we only have two different values. And for that, we can, for example, check if it's less than 1.1. Just like we did with the arc, and then greater than um, 0 0.9. And then take the, uh, multiply them together. We have a diagonal. If we not change the scale. And we have our labyrinth pattern. If you want to change the thickness, I think this one. Just need to change both of these together. That's why I did the other in the with the arc I used an input so that we don't need to change both of them. Let's just leave it at 1.1 1 .1 and 0 0.9. So yeah, that's our pattern. It's not that difficult. Maybe you can come up with your own cool patterns. And you don't need to leave it at this. You can go one step further. Just use this as a factor or um, maybe even Take it to three dimensions, it's all possible. So, yeah.